This 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 is the Earth and Things Radio. Today is June 4th, Saturday, June 4th. Hopefully this video is premiering on time, which I highly doubt. Uh it's probably gonna premiere the following Saturday or maybe throughout the week. But I highly doubt that it's going to premiere on Saturday, June uh fourth. I highly doubt that. Because we just always want to late. That's why if you ever read the description, it says what? We are late, black, and on CP time. That's color people time. That's what we are always on. So excuse us. You know, you never know what happens. Somebody could copyright claim the video, which more than likely they're going to because I like to provide everybody that watch us with some music, you know, some music to listen to. And um, uh, in doing that, I may receive copyright claims um, that are wrongful, but it's still uh, kind of a delay. You know, it's holding me up from being able to do what I really need to do uh, and make the money that I could be making because I'm waiting on them to release a claim that is not even uh, accurate or valid. So anyway, and follow our other social medias. That's at the Urban Binge. At the Urban Binge, you can also look us up um, if you want to listen to the podcast. You want to listen to this show right now uh, on the podcast. You can go look up the Urban Binge Radio. The Urban Binge Radio, um, where everywhere po- podcasts can be played, uh, I believe. So if we're not, you let me know, and um, I'll make sure that our podcast get placed in that that platform. Anyway, thank you guys, and, and follow our social media, like I said, at the Urban Binge and our boutique, Urban Binge Boutique. Uh, check us out. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I wanted to do this video. Of course, we're doing our uh, Housewives of Atlanta videos weekly. We did just miss a week last week. So they'll be back tomorrow. Like I said, today is Saturday, June 4th. So the ladies of Housewives will be back tomorrow. All right. So we'll see them tomorrow. Um, and you guys will see our review coming up this week as well. Um, coming up this week. Episode 5, I believe that is. You call me? Hopefully everything that I see on this screen currently... Uh, won't be on the screen when you guys are are actually watching the show. Anyway, happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. This video, uh, this is it's the month of June, of course. It's Pride Month. This video is supposed to be airing. Uh, More like a rolling stone, cause I have no stopping time. Can nobody stop a man? Oh, I keep going, no. More like a rolling stone, cause I have no stopping time. Can nobody stop a man? No, I got to run my race. Projections and the letdowns. Now it's hard to make it through the crowd. I missed that. No, 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 no. I missed that. I missed that. I don't know like anything. I don't know like anything that I've been through. Thank the Lord, He brought me to this. Hey, hey, hey. You know I'm established. This, 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 this is the Earth and Things Radio. Hello everybody, I'm your boy Rico Bellucci, and this is another episode of The Urban Binge. Okay, right here on Rebel TV, using this YouTube play, uh, platform, I was say playground, this is a playground. Uh, for the people that are on YouTube, it, we love it. Okay, uh, thank you everybody for watching all of us. For the people that decide to watch us and not go create your own channel, you're like, I'd rather just watch y'all. Thank you. Somebody got to be the cook. Somebody got to be the chef. Somebody got to be the janitor. Somebody got to clean up the church and clean up the schools. Somebody got to do it. There's people out here that love it and really um, want to do it. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. I take cash out. Cash out. Venmo. Venmo. Zale. Zale. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. 
by me. This this this, this is the Urban Games Radio. Radio. Sure. It's like absolutely no accent I can do. I feel like that I would pass it. I want to be an actress. I mean, actress, of course, yeah, actress. See, see. I want to act. Look, a lot of people don't know. Actor is for males. Actress is for women. A lot of people don't know that. So when you say actress, that just means that it's Angela Bassett or uh, Medea. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a, a lady who acts. Okay. An actor is a man. It's like woman. Uh, yeah. So this is Pride Month. This is Happy Pride. Happy Pride, everybody. Well, what I seen was that the uh, police officer, the police officer was merging towards the front and the car gunned a little right. And then the police officer kind of submerged and both of them interacted and it was a full twist about and the police car just twisted around like a tornado girl and the Lord just shook it up and the man just got injured. And now the result is this police officer don't know if his life is going to continue to make it or he going to just tap out. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I have a few topics that I wanted to talk about. So let's get right into it. Speaking of uh, Pride and it being Pride Month, uh, Anjanu Ellis, I believe that's how you say it. I don't know if it's Anjani or Anjanu, but it's Anja something, Auntie Angel Mama. Uh, she actually, it would be great if she did a, you know what? Let me say this right now. It would be great if Anjanu Ellis did a... Uh, uh, Bio, bio of uh, Angel Mama, you know, uh, even if it was, uh, you know, some some, you know, a uh, fiction or nonfiction, uh, you can just mix it up a little bit and make it a little bit of everything. And I think Anjanu Ellis would be great to do that. Um, and um, I think that uh, Rihanna would be great to do that woman that does this. You know, what I'm talking about who wears a scarf. I think she's on the bread or company, the dough company, or something like that. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's off the subject. But Anjanu, who knew that this woman was gay or bisexual or even just in the LGBTQ community, period? Who knew that? Who could have possibly known that? So, uh, yeah, she's come out the closet in, a, I think, an interview with Varsity or Variety or something like that uh, in, a, in a magazine interview and said that she was bisexual. She is dipping and dabbing and doing a little bit here and there, here and there. And Lady Pond, I would have never imagined that. Not for Anjani. I would have never imagined uh, her. And but then Dish Nation, they're so shady. They found some pictures um, of her where she looked clearly. She looks like um, uh, she 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 looks like she's uh, a, a, a stud, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word. I don't want to be using the wrong words, and y'all mad at me. That's not the right word. You don't call her a stud. I don't I, a woman, a gay woman. Uh, the top of a woman, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, she, they found some pictures where she looked like uh, she was definitely on top in the relationship. So it kind of made her look, it made you think like, hmm, well, yeah, she is giving me that she uh, dip and dabble in a lady pond a little bit. Anyway, yeah, Anjani is uh, bisexual, and congratulations to her that she's coming out. Um, I don't know who she's dating right now, but it would be awesome to see her... Uh, Relationship. I think that, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that she's already friends with Queen Latifah. I think she's really good friends with Queen Latifah. If not, they're probably about to be good friends now. Uh, the both of them are probably definitely going to be good friends now. Uh, her and the Terminator. But, yeah, she they should give Anjani, now that she said this, now she needs more roles like Queen Latifah. Because she gives me hard... Um, man of steel type of roles, you know. Now that she said this, you know, she was already giving me a mama who will slap you so hard, she slap your head off your shoulder. So now she says she buy is like okay. She give me um Walls group mom, you know. She giving me Mama Walls. She give me Mama Walls a lot. And I've said that before that Mama Walls give me that she has dipped and dabbled in the lady pond before too. I don't know. That's just what my spirit tell me. That's what my guts and my inside tell me. That she done dipped and dabbled in the lady pun too. So I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Anyway, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Please, if you're listening to my voice right now, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell and hit that thumbs up. Please hit that thumbs up. Um, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time we go live. So you won't ever miss a video. Hit that bell, hit that thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button, guys. Please thank you so much. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell and make sure you hit that. Uh, that thumbs up. If you hit the bell, you'll be notified of every time we go live, guys. Thank you so much. Check out the podcast. 
Urban Binge Radio, the Urban Binge Radio, and check out our bu- boutique, uh, Urban Binge Boutique, Urban Binge Boutique, uh, stylish urban wear, street wear for ladies uh, of all sizes. Make sure you check us out, Urban Binge Boutique, urbanbinge.myshopify.com, at Urban Binge Boutique on Instagram, at Urban Binge Boutique on Facebook, and our blog is the Urban Binge Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at the Urban Binge. So make sure you check us out. Anyway, uh, recently... Um, some news came through. I think this was about two days ago. Some news came through about Mariah Carey. And the news was that Mariah Carey is being sued for copyright infringement. It's a song that immediately puts you in the Christmas mood. But Mariah Carey is now facing a lawsuit over the ma- that massive hit. You know what it is. All I want for Christmas is you. This, uh, I have a lot to say about this. Uh, okay. There's a country music artist that you probably have never heard of, uh, Vince Vance, now suing Mariah for 20 million bucks, saying that he wrote and recorded a song called All I Want For Christmas Is You five years before. Well, Vince Vance, whose real name is Andy Stone, filed his lawsuit on Friday in New Orleans federal court. Experts say the only thing that the two songs have in common, pay attention to this, is the title. And they point out that the U.S. Copyright Office has dozens of songs with the same name. Mariah Carey and Sony Music have yet to comment on the lawsuit, and quite frankly, I don't think that they will because, you know, you get sued for so many different things when you have that much of a, a popularity. A song with the same title? How many songs do y'all know that have the same titles? Exactly. Right. You know and why I mean? now? This song's been out for years. Yeah. Well, he's like, she is getting paid. She is exactly. And I just, song. even if they give him one million, he'll be happy. Like, he's asking <laughs> right. for 20, but he'll settle for like a half. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what goes into it. But I think if, if she sticks to her guns and says, nope, we're going to fight this one through, yeah. and you have to pay my lawyer's mm. fees, mm. Yeah. Yeah. she might have to backfire. do that. Yeah. And um, I was really astounded by this story. I'm like, Mariah Carey's being sued for copyright infringement. And not only is that the news, but to add on to this insult, I feel like, uh, just to let you know where I stand from the top, um, she is, they're alleging that uh, the copyright infringement that they are uh, suing her over is all I want for Christmas is you. And so I believe that this is an ongoing case. I don't think that this is something new. I think Mariah Carey already heard about this years ago. I think this is probably the same person who filed a case a while ago, came back and filed it again, filed it, filed it, filed it, filed it. And this is probably a person who's going to try their luck one more time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the case was dismissed without prejudice or something like that. And it opened the door for this person to come back and, you know, file something new or whatever. Um, but I do, I, I think it's totally... Um, totally ridiculous that they would go and try to file a lawsuit on something so old. Like, this song is really old. She's made a lot of money from this song in just to the past year. Okay, As we know, every Christmas, every year, this song um, tops the charts. So, um, yeah, they probably want a piece of the pie. Speaking of Mariah Carey, Nick Cannon, her baby daddy, Mariah Carey's baby daddy. Um, <laughs> he is just shooting his nut off everywhere. I mean, everybody is getting a piece of that nut. Everybody is getting a piece of that dick. Okay? Um, first of all, we already know Nick Cannon's dick is down his leg. Okay? We know that his dick is down his leg. He has um, the, uh, the his rod of God. Let Larry tell it. His rod of God is down his leg, damn near to his knee. Um, And he's just poking and sticking it in everybody. So earlier in the day, um, we get this post. uh, We get the news that Nick Cannon was out taking pictures with a couple of his babies. In the same day, okay, we get news about uh, Nick Cannon having a girl named Bree or something pregnant with, with, I believe, twins, if I'm not mistaken. And then later on in the day, another girl, Abby Gabby or something like that, she comes out and says she's pregnant and she already has twins by Nick Cannon currently. So it was like, dang, he got two broads or two, two girls pregnant at one time. A lot of people, a lot of guys out here are very envious of uh, Nick Cannon. First of all, he has a big dick. Um, he is able to have sex with the most prettiest women. Let me put an S at the end of that. Women's around the block and impregnate them, literally just all in them. Shoot that nut off in them 
and apparently it's taking care of all of his kids because I have not heard one single bad thing from any of these mothers, especially not when Mariah Carey is one of your baby um baby mamas. I think he know that you know if uh, Mariah is probably always holding his feet under the fire, um, on top of fire, but. Uh, the other women probably don't do that as much. So if just Mariah is bugging him about, you know, doing the right thing by his children, then he probably feel that emotion um, for the rest of them. You know, like I can't just treat Moroccan and Morocco or whatever their name is um, nice and not treat the rest of my children with the same niceness, I guess. Uh, but we haven't heard any bad things about Nick Cannon or anything from his baby, from any of his baby mamas, any of his um children's family members or anything like that so apparently he takes care of all of his kids he did say that recently in an interview that um he's in all of his children's lives uh, more than the average adult uh is in their child's lives so uh, i don't know how true that is because you got like 12 children and counting okay so i don't know how true that is but one of nick cannon's children did die as you know recently uh, rest in peace to that little baby that baby did die uh which does not take away from the fact that the number is you know, the children that he's had, he's, it's, it's still count as a child that he had. Although the baby is deceased, Nick has that many children, including that baby. I think about 11 or 12, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe 10 or 11, 11 or 12, 10 or 11, one or the other. But Nick, me and my partner would love to have a night with you. Just hit me up. I'm just talking shit. Anyway, let's move on. So another thing that's in the news um, guys, it's Tasha K and Cardi B. This thing just never ends. Uh, it just keeps going and going and going, just like the Energizer Bunny, I feel like. It just never ends. Um, so basically, of course we know that um, six months ago, Cardi B um, came out and won the uh, legal battle between Tasha K and uh, herself, right? Um, you know, she filed a defamation lawsuit against Tasha K, which she won. Uh, a whopping $4 million. Uh, but now Tasha K is trying to go back to court, according to TMZ and new court documents. Tasha K has filed an updated appeal to one she previously filed, and now she is asking for appeals court to throw out Cardi B's multi million dollar judgment. So um, she filed a uh, second appeal uh, to get out of paying this $4 million that she owes. And if you thought that that messy legal saga between the YouTuber and Tasha K Grammy winner was over, think again, because Billboard reports that Tasha K, via her attorneys, has just filed a new appeal to get the previous ruling in the defamation case overturned, including the $4 million judgment that Cardi received after it was determined that Tasha was guilty. The appeal states that in the previous case, the judge withheld key evidence about Cardi B's character and didn't let jurors see who Cardi truly was. The opening brief filed in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, Tasha K's legal team alleged that Judge William Ray had erroneously, erroneously and purposely excluded tons of evidence about Cardi B, which unfairly led to her winning against Tasha back in January. Additionally, Tasha's attorney is also claiming that information regarding Cardi's character should have been allowed to be included in a case that click, I mean, in a in the in in a case between them two that you know that regards defamation, that is so um un, very unfortunate. Um, Tasha K wants to not have to pay this four million dollars, but with Tasha K not wanting to pay this four million dollars, uh, she's still saying little slick shit here and there, you know, on Fox Soul and uh, on her own show. She's still saying little slick shit here and there here and there that sounds like you know i'm not bothered <laughs> i'm not bothered at all i ain't finna pay shit though you know that's what it's giving me and i hope i don't know what i really don't know what's in tasha k's mind and i wish she would just tell us all what what really are you thinking like you you know that you have the proof uh or what you know i want to i wonder what you know and as you see the appeal is not based on uh anything well what we see from what we see so far it's not based on anything where it said where it's saying you know i didn't do these things um and it should be overturned because this is a lie instead it's saying um you know uh, a de better determination would have been made if uh the true character of the uh defendant would have been able to be truly shown you know i don't i really don't understand that but i'm not a lawyer and i'm not a court official so 
uh, it's not for me to understand and I'm, I'm this is not my my battle i'm just reporting this because i feel like tasha has still said some slick things that made me think tasha don't care about paying that money you know she don't care about having to pay that she must got money and um you know other things happen that end up making me second guess so it's kind of like my mind is confused because one minute she is acting and saying things as if you know um she doesn't care about having to pay that and then the next thing you know she is um you know asking for it to be overturned because the character of cardi was not able to be shown in real life i just don't understand that i think she should just keep cardi name out her mouth and when she's asked about it she should not say slick and smart remarks uh because if i was in the jury if i was in the jury i don't know uh i would have to see the facts but based off of everything that's going on currently on the surface that i see i would not overturn anything i would try to teach tasha k a lesson that i feel she should be taught because she's still out doing interviews uh portraying i don't give a fuck you know i'm good damn uh, ain't nothing gonna happen to me you know i'm good so i really don't know what she has up her sleeve or what she got in the bag where she's able to continue to talk rebelliously uh or recklessly um like you know nothing is gonna happen to her but okay whatever tasha k she got money and she got a bigger platform than me so i hate to be in an argument with her but i'm just giving my opinion and my my feelings about the situation just like she do on her platform um and that's what i do here that's what i love to do so that's what i'm doing moving into some other uh news so jada pinkett smith recently as you guys know they they're calling it the slap heard around the world i don't like calling it that because i really just don't like what will did like it's nothing i can't joke about it uh uh in will's favor at all if i want to joke about it i want to joke about it in chris rock's favor um and not joke about it in will's favor at all so any joke favoring will i am not in on it like so the slap heard around the world is kind of favoring him uh because i just don't to me overall it's favoring him because still this man was slapped so yes it makes him more of a victim by saying it was heard around the world but eh, no uh it was seen around the world and those are absolute facts and then i guess it was heard because everybody has now heard it but still i like no i don't want to praise will smith or give him props in any way for the bullshit he pulled on that stage like i'm absolutely not happy you know who's got the hardest job tonight javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated now if she loses he can't win <laughs> he is praying that will smith wins like please lord jada i love you gi jane too can't wait to see it all right <laughs> That was a that was a nice one. Okay, I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh wow, wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Get my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a GI Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a uh, greatest night in the history of television. Okay. Okay. And um, with Jada Pinkett Smith, she came to the Red Table Talk, and I think she's so full of shit. She seemed, uh, just like Al Reynolds and Claudia said, so robotic. Very robotic, very um, um, set up and just cold, ice cold, um, as if she did not give a, give a damn. Uh, you know, as if this man didn't get up here on this stage and slap the shit out of his own friend for your feelings, for your emotions, for, uh, for the sake of you. This is a really important red table talk on alopecia. Considering what I've been through with my own health and what happened at the Oscars, thousands have reached out to me with their stories. I'm using this moment to give our alopecia family an opportunity to talk about what it's like to have this condition and to inform people about what alopecia actually is. Now about Oscar night, my deepest hope is that these two intelligent, capable men have an opportunity to heal, talk this out, and reconcile. The state of the world today, we need them both. And we all actually need one another more than ever. Until then, 
Will and I are continuing to do what we have done for the last 28 years, and that's keep figuring out this thing called life together. Thank you for listening. This is going to be difficult for me. Um, these are my peers. I've done a movie with both of them. Set it off with Jada and Independence Day with Will Smith, which absolutely changed my life. When I saw this video last night, it made me cry. I'll be very honest with you guys. Oh, come on, Viv. I really felt to be a partner to Will Smith, whose career basically took a crumble that night. We were all rooting for Will Smith that night. Oscar night, we wanted mm -hmm. him to win. Will Smith that night, as far as I was concerned, was going to be crowned this generation's Sidney Poitier, which is a huge honor. Mm -hmm. I felt to be a good partner, there was no accountability. Will Smith was defending her honor. That was why the reason he walked on stage and slapped because he felt like his, will, his wife had been offended. Mm -hmm. So for me to see no accountability as a partner. Also, let's not forget that Chris Rock was assaulted. Mm -hmm. We cannot forget that. Mm -hmm. For basically telling a joke that I really felt wasn't that bad. Let's not forget that this show was executive produced by Will Packer, an Afri African American man. This night was a night of African American and diversity for brown and black people. Mm -hmm. Whew. That now will forever be scarred. You know what I'm saying? He was laughing it off at first, whether the laugh was fake or not. Uh, we have determined that the look that you gave him might have been the reason, more than likely, was the reason why he got up there and slapped the shit out of him because of the look that you gave Will. And um, it was as if, like Vivica Fox said, it was as if there was no accountability taken from Jada Pinkett's part. You know, you had that entire platform, you had this entire opportunity on your own platform that you own to uh, apologize and give a more sincere, heartfelt reason or, or, or some, something to say, you know, I'm apologetic. And, and if there is any thought in anybody's mind that the look that I gave Will that night might have caused him or triggered him, um, it might have, but that wasn't the only thing um, that triggered him. There were multiple reasons, but focusing on myself, my look that I gave him might have been one of the reasons why he got up and slapped the shit out of his close friend. Um, and that's just the truth. I found so many photos. If you guys Google yourself, um, Will Smith and, and Chris Rock, you'll find several photos of Will Smith and Chris Rock both hanging out together, um, having a great time. Even Jada Pinkett um, in, in several of those photos, probably uh, a lot of those photos, Jada Pinkett uh, is present. And if she's not present, she was definitely at the event um, at the same time whenever Chris and Will, I don't know, something underlined with that, but Jada definitely came off as ice fucking cold with uh, her explanation and how she felt. I just feel like it was absolutely no reason for the coldness. You know, you should have gave, you talk about everything else on that table. You are very open and you open up your mouth and talk about a lot of bullshit that we didn't ask you to talk about. But now we want to hear some accountability and some taking responsibility and you can't do it. You gave us uh, less than 30 seconds of acknowledgement of your husband slapping the taste out this man's mouth. It's like, it's totally ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. And, um, you know, quite frankly, I didn't know the bitch had alopecia. I didn't know the bitch had alopecia. And, I, and I'm saying the bitch uh, is not a personal thing towards Jada Pinkett. Uh, I'll say this about Kenya Moore or any woman or male that um, I'm not fond of. Uh, and it's just me talking. It's just my own commentary. So I didn't know the bitch was bald here because the bitch had alopecia. Okay, I thought that the bitch was bald here because she cut the shit off trying to match her daughter or maybe she was doing a uh, movie role or something. I thought she voluntarily cut her fucking hair off. Come to find out that's not what happened. 
uh, she has alopecia. And so, you know, I I think it looks great on her. You know, it's not like, you know, it may be traumatizing to her. You know, but to us, what we see out here, it probably doesn't matter to her. But I promise you, Jada, we see beauty. We see beauty, okay? Which a lot of people can't pull a bald head off and be beautiful as Jada Pinkett Smith. A lot of people can't cut their hair flat the fuck off and just look as beautiful as Jada Pinkett Smith looks. Jada Pinkett looks great with her bald head. And uh, a lot of people can't pull it off like Jada can. So kudos to Jada Pinkett, I say. And, um, you know, fuck the haters who, uh, who says she could play in the next G.I. Jane. I think she could, but hey. If I was her, I would definitely take take uh, somebody up on that offer. I think Shonda Rhimes or somebody hopping on that or trying to talk to her about that. You know, how do you approach her about wanting to do uh, a G.I. Jane after such a bad incident? You know, I would hop on it. Probably a good good paying gig. Um, and then it would be a good kiki, you know. But you definitely got to apologize to Chris. And Chris should sue the fuck out of y'all because that was clearly not painful and, and nothing stressful about it if you were able to go do a G.I. Jane movie uh, after you slapped the shit out of me. It's like a smear on top of a smear. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Jada Pinkett, ice cold, uh, bitch, you deserve to be slapped because, uh, and uh, maybe not by, not, maybe not by, maybe not by your husband, but by um, some other bitch around the way. Um, Vivica, shit. I don't know. Uh, but, but yeah. You 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 are ice cold and you should have gave a better apology than that. You are his partner. You're an extension of him. Period. No matter how you think you are, you are an extension of Will D. Smith. And um, your apology is just as effective and just as important as his apology and his acknowledgement of this thing. Uh, we still don't forgive him because he gave us a written statement from his publicist. Bitch, we don't forgive him. We're waiting on him to show his face just like he... I was talking about um, our store. So we do have the Urban Binge Boutique, guys. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Urban Binge Boutique, where we cater to feminine. You know, I cannot say that we only cater to female. We have trans women that shop at our store. We have trans men that shop at our store. We have cisgender women, cisgender men uh, who are feminine, you know, uh, who like feminine wear and feminine clothing. Um, we also have straight men that come, you know, who heterosexual men who come in to buy for their girlfriends, for their mom, for their sister, um, for their cousin. So we have a variety of people coming to our store. Uh, we just opened up the store. The store just launched recently. So we have a, um, our summer collection that's out right now and our Bellucci collection, which is our special edition, our special collection that is going to have customized outfits and customized pieces in it. Um, again, you guys can shop at our store online urbanbinge.myshopify.com that's urbanbinge.myshopify.com guys please support our store go shop please go shop um you you're gonna love it you're gonna absolutely love the pieces that we have the outfits that we have urbanbinge.myshopify.com guys Brittany griner oh my god Brittany griner the girl first of all i've already expressed how i feel about Brittany griner and my partner has already tried to reveal my sexuality to you guys at least what he thinks i am me and my partner have been together 10 years and recently on an episode of uh, real housewives of atlanta we were reviewing the housewives episode and he said i didn't even catch the shade until we rewatched the episode after it was put out on the platform he said i'm dating i only date straight and bisexual boys and he pointed at me when he said bisexual as if i'm bisexual but no uh he knows that there are certain studs that have come on to me uh, there's certain studs that come on to both of us 
and he knows that I've been the one more prone uh, to uh, have sex with a woman uh, who is masculine than um, before he would even think about going that way. Uh, so uh, that's why he's calling me bisexual. But I don't consider it bisexual because I probably would eat uh, eat it up on a on a or, or beat it up on a stud. You know, if a stud, a sexy stud, one like Brittany Griner was like, you know. I want to give it to you, then yeah, I, I, my rod of God is probably going to do what it's, it's here to do uh, and do some business. I'm not saying what it's here to do as in it's meant to be fucking pussy. I'm saying here to do as in it's meant to be sticking and going in, out, in, out and fucking some shit up. Um, but no, uh, I, I don't consider myself, not, not yet at least, bisexual. I consider myself curious in that area of sex. Um, but definitely not bisexual. But Brittany Griner is somebody who I think, uh, who I who 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 is attractive, very attractive. Um, because if you look at her, she looks like a boy. I mean, if she was a boy, she would look like a very handsome ass boy, tall boy, dreads, light skin. She looked uh, like you know a, a very cute light skin basketball player. And um, yo, so anyway, Brittany Griner, uh, of course, is over in Russia. She's in prison. Unfortunately, they have her locked up. Um, because really they found out that it was a personal thing. Uh, at first they were trying to say she had drugs. Um, and this is from what the other players were saying is, look, we've taken, um, vape pens. Allegedly we've taken vape pens over there too. And we've never gotten arrested. But just as soon as this war begins and, uh, the United States is sending over weapons of mass destruction, uh, to Ukraine, um, and the USA name is on these weapons, uh, then Russia tried to uh, grow this personal vendetta and get us back by taking one of our athletes who was currently at the airport and had marijuana, which is illegal in Russia. So, hey, why don't I arrest you and uh, take you to uh, prison? Uh, and probably She's probably being done worse than any old normal person, but... Uh, news has come out. First of all, imagine being over there uh, in another country. Um, you've never been to jail in your own... Well, she has been to jail, okay? Uh, she has been to jail in the United States for domestic violence. She's been arrested. She's been jailed for domestic violence. Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, it has actually uh, caused her... She's had mug shots, blah, 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 blah. No, you can't come in here. Close the door. Close the door. She coming in here with her tablet and stuff. I'm sorry. My my little girl came to the door. Anyway, so yeah. Brittany crying her. Uh, I had to go deal with her. I'm sorry. I had to go deal with my little girl. She came to the door. Have to go deal with her. This is why I cannot go live. I'll go live and end up having to get up from here. Go deal with her, and what am I going to do? Play some elevator music for y'all while y'all sit here and just wait on me to come back? Lord Jesus. <laughs> Brittany Griner, uh, she can now communicate with her family. Uh, I don't know where I was, what I was talking about, about Brittany Griner, but I know that the gist of the story is that Brittany Griner can now communicate with her family. Isn't that great, guys? Uh, I think I was saying just, like, imagine being over in another country and, um, yeah, she's been to jail before is what I was saying. She's been to jail for domestic violence, um, if I'm not mistaken. Allegedly domestic violence uh, with her partner. I believe it's the wife that she's with now, if I'm not mistaken, who just graduated recently. Or uh, the girl who she was with prior to this woman. Uh, but I believe it's the woman that she's with now. They've both been arrested for uh, domestic violence. So she's been to jail before. She got a little bit of taste of the United States jail, but now she in a whole nother ball game. She over in Russia, okay? This is a third world country, a fourth world country, bitch. Uh, Cause they ass is like completely disconnected. Them in North Korea, I wouldn't want to be caught dead over there, damn it, okay? So just imagine uh, being alive in this country where they already don't get along with the country you were born in. This is a country that just hates your country, hates your president and everything that you have been born into. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to brainwash this girl, turn her into a robot and return her back to the U.S. And it won't be the real Britney Griner. It's going to be a robot Britney Griner, a Britney Griner that they have put a battery pack in the back of. And now she's a Russian spy. I was asking Jay, like when they release these people back from Russia, are they questioned by the FBI first? 
uh like are they under uh close surveillance to make sure that russia has not radicalized them or or put a chip in their their head or in their bodies to make them uh start acting crazy or doing erratic shit i don't know jay said yeah jay said he more than likely he 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 believes that more than likely the fbi or homeland security somebody has a conversation with these people uh uh you know after being released from russia um they have a conversation they they watch them closely probably send them to a psychiatrist stuff like that but britney griner is able to communicate with her family uh via email so basically her uh family can email the attorney or her agent uh they'll print the the emails out and they drop them off to her uh in paper form and so she gets all of these emails uh in paper and then uh she can either write them back if she has paper handy at the moment and hand it off to her agent or her attorney she'll travel it back to the united states or um she'll uh do a voice recording or her attorney will send the message back via you know mouth um but nothing she's not able to speak to them over the phone or anything like that she's only able to speak to the agent and the agent communicates uh to the family or to the wife that is so unfortunate britney could probably be over here for like five years but i don't i don't know hopefully uh biden and kamala could do something more than what they're doing to get this girl from over here but she's been over here for a while now and i can like i can only imagine what she feels like being in this country in a prison right now during a war you know so i hope that she knows though that she is the united she is on the priority list of the president so that's that's something to feel great about you know that some way somehow in biden's presidency he's gonna get you from over there um and even if we got a republican president i believe that they're probably gonna work to get you from over there um and i'm saying you we all be like you i miss you so much like they can hear us please she's in jail she can't hear me and she'll probably never watch this video but yeah britney griner can now communicate so find out who her agent is find out who her manager is guys if you are uh hot and you want to message her or if you just want to give her some words of encouragement find out who her agent is or who her manager is who her people is and um you could possibly email them a letter and um the letter will be you know vetted. it's also the letters are the, and the emails are also being vetted by russian officials so before the lawyer can even bring these letters um the russian officials are reading these letters scanning through these letters making sure it's nothing deadly you know no parcel or anything like that and making sure that it's no threats in the letter or nothing towards vladimir putin and no crazy shit. pretty sure they're not worried about this girl being threatened they more so worried about their country being threatened in these letters and that's crazy and ridiculous to me uh i bet she learned her lesson though i ain't going back to russia if i was her i wouldn't return i quit the basketball team fuck that international bullshit i'm not going to go play no basketball in north korea or russia period uh and i would suggest everybody just do the same thing like don't support them in no way they don't need no basketball teams fuck that and for the motherfuckers that's over there that's being brainwashed you keep being brainwashed you better take a flight and go into the next country uh and get up out of russia so that uh you don't fall under that brainwash bullshit anyway so in other news young thug young thug thugger thugger and gonna first of all let me say this i think young thug is so fine okay jay doesn't agree jay be like why do you like him what do you see in him what is it about him he is a gully why do you like this boy i think young thug is cute as hell uh very fuckable um i'm sorry that's just how i feel okay um but of course we know that young thug is in jail currently right now um i think i think it's like i don't know like 23 charges um or something like that did you call me yeah me too well let me finish this real quick all right let me finish let me finish my video real quick and call you back, alright? I'ma call you back. My mama really wanna talk, but I have to put I have to remember that when I'm doing these videos, I need to put my phone. I need to put my phone on absolute uh do not disturb mode, cause when my mama needs somebody to talk to, I'm the only person that she gonna call to ramble and talk to. So I'm sitting here just like, oh, mama, 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 come on. She's stressing me out. I need to smoke. Jay ain't came in here yet because I was just kidding. 
I was just kidding, baby. Uh, but yeah, so my mama always like, I'm sorry. Oh my God, baby. The fan. Hi, everybody. Say hi. Hello. Hi. Give me a hug. So yeah, sorry. See, if it's not one thing, it's another. Okay, I'm always being stopped. Anyway, so yeah. Young Thug is in jail, currently being held at the Cobb County Jail. Uh, he is being charged, and his name is Jeffrey Wilson Williams. Let's not forget, this boy's name is Jeffrey Williams. It doesn't matter. Jeffrey is fine as hell, okay? With his cute name and everything. Oh, my God, I love it. Anyway, um, he's been charged with conspiracy to violate the racketeering influence and corrupt organization so that's what rico stands for racketeer influence and corrupt organizations uh act in a 56 count indictment 88 pages okay 88 pages 56 count indictment that also included several other um young stoner life records so um it's supposed to be young stoner life is what uh, a lot of the ysl members are now saying since um these charges have come up the new thing is that it's young stoner life and i know that a lot of people were already saying that a lot of the children in atlanta were already i'm from atlanta just to let you guys know but i currently uh do not live in atlanta but born and raised all my life uh in atlanta but um the children do say young stoner life um but young thug says young slime life so uh that's what the the prosecutors are trying to say the ysl is slime um and i don't know what the difference is and i guess they have a new meaning for uh slime and young slime or whatever whatever i don't i i don't know i guess it means something bad to them uh thug was arrested on may 9th after his home in atlanta was raided by authorities right it was helicopters everywhere and um ghana was another person who was named in the uh in, in the whole thing anyway they did hours and hours and hours the other day they're trying to get him out on bond and june 2nd uh they did hours and hours of talking this man was gonna pay upward of a million dollars more than a million dollars he's gonna build a studio inside of one of his four homes around atlanta um he was gonna stay in the house 24 7 excluding any uh electronics no wi-fi uh with an ankle monitor 24 7 uh watched around the clock by the sheriffs of atlanta uh, all this stuff he was willing to do and um the, the his attorney talked for about two or three hours uh had witnesses come up to vouch for the fact that um he would be doing work in the community and um not doing any miscellaneous things in the community not threatening any witnesses no contact with other people and all this kind of stuff and i felt like everything that the attorney was offering and saying thug was gonna do uh, in order to be out of jail and free at home until the trial, which is in January of 2023, that's next year, um, it was it was basically jail. He was just going to be at home. He was not going to have electronics. He wasn't going to be able to go outside the house. He was going to have to be monitored 24-7 by sheriffs in his house, three sheriffs in his house. He was going to have to uh, let them know, let the courts know every time somebody wanted to come over. They were going to have to be on a clearance list to clear them to come into the home. Uh, he was going to pay and put the sheriff's office on an hourly salary. Uh, I mean, like, literally, he was going to do a lot to uh, maintain his, uh, I guess, kind of sort of freedom, if you will. Uh, but not really freedom because he was going to be in jail at home. And um, they really set it up really nice. They had um, Machine Gun Kelly send in a video. They had Kevin Lyles come up on the stand and speak. They had a 15-year-old, a minor even come into the courtroom and speak from Cleveland Avenue in Atlanta. Um, and um, at the end of the day, uh, after Young Thug's uh, attorneys had pled this hours and hours and hours long case, trying to plead with the judge to please let my client out on bond, he is not a danger to the community, he's safe. Uh, it was finally time after recess uh, for the DA to speak. And the DA only literally spoke for about 20 to 30 minutes. And um, all of his words were basically uh the 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 straw that broke the camel's back um because the judge denied the bond based off of what the da fought and combated back with young thug's attorney basically saying you know all of what young thug is willing to do to get out of jail is perfectly fine but here's the problem he's here because of rico charges he is spending money paying people to get shit handled to get shit done to make shit happen and um 
that is why he is here he's the leader of this gang he's paying people to make illegal things happen and he thinks that he can come in his courtroom and sway the courts with money and possibly make things happen and get his way uh and that was just kind of the cake that took it all it kind of took it all it took the cake i mean that's what i meant it took the cake uh and the judge felt like okay and he also said young thug uh is not tied to these specific threats but the witnesses are being threatened outside of this case uh, I mean, outside of the courtroom, of course, people who are witnesses to the case outside of the courtroom, outside of jail are being threatened. They've also spoken to a few witnesses uh, and the witnesses say that if Young Thug is released, they fear for their lives and they believe that they will be dead. So he was asking the judge, you know, based off of all of that, I'm asking that he stays just right where he is until his trial happens. And the judge took all of those words and could not, um, you know, could not fight back with that. And denied bun i was very shocked that after nine six or not six to nine hours we sat there watching this watching this watching this thinking that this man was gonna have some type of leniency on um on young thug and release him on bond uh based off of everything he was willing to do and it's it just did not work it didn't work in his favor so he is currently sitting in a cell right now uh locked up uh, on uh, alleged RICO charges um, and let's just hope that all of this turns out well for Young Thug. It's going to be so crazy if he sit in jail and he ends up not guilty and other people are guilty and he's not guilty. That's going to be crazy. Um, but anyway, yeah. Young Thug is in jail and has not been denied fun. I mean, has and was denied fun. I'm sorry. And was absolutely denied fun. Let's move on. Oh, of the, And the judge, I do want to say that um, Judge cited that uh it was significant concern that he would be a danger to uh the community and obstruct justice is what he was worried about the the judge is a black man so i don't know if thug are gonna feel like he being biased or anything but this man does not come off as biased he's a black man he comes off as non-biased and as he's just trying to do his job uh the judge did say though that he would consider reopening the case uh or reopening um you know reconsidering something if they brought another petition or motion regarding young thug uh bond he would um you know reconsider it reopen it and see what he can do then but the trial is set for january 9th 2023 i can imagine that young thug is gonna probably settle down for a little bit sit there for a couple of months and then come back and file another um appeal or something to get to be released on bond first <laughs> The Urban Binge Radio Podcast. Where we discuss viral topics, hot jams, new artists, fun, and informative interviews and conversations. This is your new stop for the hottest trend in urban culture news. Two shows, one podcast, The Urban Binge Show and Sunday Flow Show powered by The Urban Binge. The Urban Binge Radio Podcast. Listen anywhere podcast can be heard. So, Real Housewives of the ATL, Carlos King, and the OG Housewives of the ATL. Now, this cannot be disputed. This cannot be argued down. And nobody from any other franchise matters, even if they tried to argue this down or give any try to... I mean, any any kind of explanation for why they can say a better franchise of Housewife that's better than Atlanta. You cannot give me a Housewife franchise that is better than the Atlanta Housewife franchise. So, oh, sorry, Joe. You can't you can't give me a franchise that's better than the Housewife of Atlanta franchise. They are the number one franchise. It's like literally legendary moments that top other legendary moments. Of course. There are other legendary moments on other Housewives um, franchises, you know, such as Teresa flipping over the table uh, and whatever else that I cannot think of that happened on other Housewives franchises. I've literally never watched a full episode of any other Housewives, but recently, okay, recently, yesterday, I just watched a full episode of, an, of, of another franchise and I'll let you guys know. But I've never watched another uh, Real Housewives of any other country until just recently, right? Not a full episode all the way through from beginning to end, okay? 
Uh, so, of course, Atlanta is just my number one. Now, I did miss the entire season 13 uh, with Toya. I only caught a couple of episodes of that. And the middle of the season with the Bolo situation, I caught full episodes from beginning to end of those. But a lot of those episodes, I totally missed. I totally missed the second half of the season, uh, all of the end of the season, the last four or five episodes. And I did not watch the reunion at all of season 13. So I don't know what I missed and what happened. We'll have to go back in and literally watch it because I literally do not know what happened on the last episode at all right so uh with that being said um housewives of atlanta is the number one franchise carlos king can, it has to be credited for all that he has done for the real housewives uh franchise the real housewives of atlanta because of his work he caused other franchises to step their pussy up you know what i'm saying where they thought they could come in the game and be mediocre uh and simple and plain he caused shit to shake up with other producers other franchise owners and things like that uh carlos king he wasn't even a franchise owner he was simply a producer hired to run the show and do his damn thing and he did the damn thing that's why season one through nine is so legendary and has had the best ratings of housewife history overall um so those seasons are his seasons he was the best number one producer of any housewife franchise he was who uh he's now the producer and creator of love and marriage huntsville uh and a lot of people love martel and uh uh, uh martel and uh i forget i forget his wife name um melody holt um they love them he's instantly made them stars overnight putting their business out here on front street they are putting their own business out here on front street carlos king is a producer extravaganza a producer extraordinaire um the man knows how to do reality tv reality tv for women and he does what he has to do and what needs to be done this is why oprah has picked him up over at the own network and is bringing him aboard over there because he does it he does the damn thing and he is doing a really good job over our own so far to the point where they've now done a love and marriage potomac you might as well say it's potomac he probably can't use the word potomac because uh andy has probably trademarked that nobody else can use that name on a show uh which is wrong uh if he did i don't know but he should he should have named it I mean, love and marriage potomac i'm assuming bravo uh trademark uh or probably did some type of um uh i don't know what you call it uh I don't know, locked it in where nobody can use that for a reality show, the word Potomac or the name Potomac, but that doesn't make sense because that should just be free to use. Uh, it would have got, I think, I think it would have been more. And it's called. Right. That's probably why, but I think it would have rung a bell if it was love and marriage Potomac. Just doesn't that sound better? Love and marriage Potomac, love and marriage DC love and marriage potomac but don't don't play because bravo andy andy is a messy bitch if it came out with um real housewives of huntsville alabama next bitch um and it's mansion bitches bitches who live in mansion in, around country ass alabama Ooh. anyway like i said oprah has um he she picked up uh carlos king to come on over here to uh my network and um he's doing the damn thing with all these reality shows over here uh, and now he has his own night show where they uh, recap on old shows. I, I thought it was just like old, um, old own shows, but apparently it's old shows, period. Uh, a recap of any old episode across um, TV, period. Because now he has um, all the ladies of Real Housewives of Atlanta coming. And I would assume that with Sheree being under contract with Bravo, she can't come over to own and do nothing on another network but uh i don't know i don't know how that works but uh nini won't be on that uh recap nightcap episode uh coming on sunday and i believe it comes on sunday at eight they really pressing each other they really stepping on each other's toes because own has these love shows that they're putting out and now all of a sudden bravo comes out with a love match now they granted they did already have love match shows on bravo before housewives even came out they were doing uh home decor love matching shit like that boring ass shows on bravo before housewives blew the network up right hold on oh yeah because patty briggs had her own show on bravo hold on let me see something when is june 11th okay so it comes on june 11th 
at um okay so june 11th at 10 that's that's not that's not at the same time as housewives of atlanta but it's at the same time as watch what happens live Carlos King is doing a damn thing. His podcast is blowing up. His TV shows is blowing up. He is really uh, doing a damn thing. So Nene won't be on there. I assume that Nene uh, won't, can't be on there because all they're going to be talking about is Bravo and uh, the show. They're going to be recapping, nightcapping uh, back on the show. Uh, and with Nene having an uh, open case in Fulton County, a lawsuit against um, Bravo, Andy Cohen, Steven Weinstock, and Truly Original Entertainment, um, I can imagine, I would imagine that Nene, anything good or bad that she says about them, the attorney is going to use it against her. No matter what, no matter what, something that she would say in that reunion, they're going to use against her. Uh, so... They don't want to, and then not only that, Kim Zosiak will be present, and Kim Zosiak is named in the lawsuit. Look, the elephant in the room is, we know that Nene has this lawsuit that's coming out, where she alleged a lot of things that happened. Um, Kim, your name is mentioned in it. Hmm. Is there anything that you can say? I mean, she knows what she's saying is not true in regards to me. That's ridiculous, and she knows it. So I'll deal with her when she's done with them. And if I was Kim Zosiak, I'll probably go get a restraining order on Nene just because Nene has played this role of we're friends, we're not friends, we're friends, we're not friends. So instead, I would just say, look, she's mentally unstable and I am afraid for my life. So I need a restraining order. And I don't give a fuck how bad it hit the blogs. I don't care how bad it hit Nene, how bad she feel, how upset she is. I would literally take a restraining order out on Nene so that she can stop with the fake shit. Don't come hug me, Kim. Oh my God, Kim. No, no. Just to sever the relationship because she'll try to get back cool with Kim and Kim will fall right back into the trap. Bitch, she called you racist. And if you are, then you are. But she has called it out on your ass. Why the fuck would you even forgive her and be back friends with her? How many times y'all gonna go back through this? Like, friends, not friends, friends, not friends. And let Nene tell it. She ain't mean no harm by naming you in the lawsuit. Let Nene tell it. You should not be mad at that. You should just still be friending her and give her a hug around. Squeeze her neck next time you see her. You know, let Nene tell it. Let you have an attitude with Nene for naming her in a goddamn lawsuit. So Nene, we don't need to expect Nene. It'll be it'll be a huge surprise if Nene just walk out that bitch. Hey there. Nene gonna always be around now, so you got to wear that hat. She may be gone for a couple weeks, but she's back. She ain't never leaving. Never. I don't know what that Nene means, ain't got nothing okay. to do with you, and I've made that very clear. Can I say something? Okay. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. She's back. And come out, but I highly doubt it. Um, they've already named everybody who's gonna be there. So yeah, um, but Nene won't be there. Speaking of Nene though, Nene is being sued um, by, oh wait, but before I move on, let me say this, that I tweeted out to Carlos King that he should do a love and marriage Atlanta. And if he did a love and marriage Atlanta, the star of the show should be Nene Leakes and her new boo. And then I just recently seen Simon um, Gubordier have a birthday party at Lanithia Lounge and Portia and Nene took a picture together and I was like, you know what? If Nene and her boo don't want to do it, they should do Portia and Simon as the lead of Love and Marriage Atlanta. I think that would be great, but I think it should be Nene. Um, and then uh, he comes on, Carlos King comes on Dish Nation and La uh, not Larry, uh, um, what's his name? Gary with the T asked him, would he do a Love and Marriage Atlanta? <laughs> Now, Carlos, now, I'm a huge fan, honey, you know, of all your shows, of Love and Marriage, honey, of um, Huntsville, and now D.C. Uh-oh. Yes. So, Carlos, so now, when are you going to do something here in Black, I mean, Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I did The Real Housewives of Atlanta for, what, nine seasons? Yeah. So, you know, I had wow. to yeah. grow and branch off and spread my wings. So, I am uh -huh. definitely going to figure oh, wow. out what a Love and Marriage Atlanta could look like. Atlanta is filled with so many personalities yes. and swingers. So I am uh -huh. okay. If you can make a dream cast, who would be in the cast? Ooh. So I want to see what Portia and Simon are up to. I miss seeing them on television. Yeah, so. did you see their show? Of course I did. Me too. Don't think it went over our 
I'm like, really, Gary? Gary be watching our channel. I know Gary be watching our channel. Gary know damn well I was screaming his name one day. He was driving in his convertible down, uh, I think, that, yeah, that Peachtree Street. And um, I was standing right outside my apartment building. And I was like, that's Gary with the T with his convertible down. And I'm sc literally screaming Gary's name. I was young. I was like 18, 19. And I'm screaming Gary's name. I'm like, Gary, Gary, Gary. He looked over and looked back at the light and ignored me from being on. And I'm just like, damn, I'm waving at Gary. He just straight up ignored me. Uh, I was a little embarrassed, but hey, it is what it is. Kaya did this, kind of did the same thing, kind of sort of. She embarrassed me, the rapper Kaya. Let me tell you what Kaya, uh, ugly ass, the, this is not on the subject, but uh, Kaya, she was at Gay Pride at Piedmont Park. Like I said, I'm from Atlanta, and we were all at Piedmont Park, and she was coming out of the bathroom at the park with some friends, and she had on a shirt with her album printed on the shirt, and she had albums in her hand, like this, you know, holding a bunch of albums. And I said, um, hey, oh my God, y'all, this is Kaya. Nobody even noticed her. All my friends, Jaden noticed her, Shane. She's really an unrecognizable bitch. But she looked normal, right? And she was short. And so uh, I never met Kaya. I, was, I noticed her because I love Kaya. I love female rappers, so I noticed her. I said, oh my God, y'all, this Kaya. Shane them still looking like, who? I'm like, Kaya, the rapper, Kaya. That, oh my God. Then it finally dawned on y'all that it was Kaya. They still, Shane them still want to act like, oh, let me get a picture. I said, let me get a picture. Guess what this bitch said? You got to pay me for the picture. Um, but yeah, Kaya, it's always, like, it's always something. In the middle of my tape, always something. Anyway, Kaya asked for $5 to take the picture with her or buy an album, and then she'll take a picture while you're holding the album. I'm like, no, fuck no. Your music is not that bad that it's this hot out here at Piedmont Park that I'm going to pay 5 or $10 for a goddamn picture with Kaya, and I need a goddamn slushy up under this tent in a minute. <clears throat> and a funnel cake, possibly. Uh, and you think I'm going to spend my 5 or $10 on you, Snaggletooth bitch? No. So needless to say, I took pictures of her from behind, and she walked away. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. That's what the fuck I'm doing. I'm, I'm selling my goddamn pictures. People, nobody, they overheard me. Of course, the crowd, people looking at me. People everywhere. They looking at Kaya. They looking at me. And they seen that. But one gay boy walked up to her and did it. He bought an album, and he went on and took a picture. He got a picture before she walked off. We went all about our business. But I'll never pay Kaya for a picture. Kaya? Please, just get out of here. And it's this hot outside, and I need a funnel cake, bitch. Nene, her new boo for Love and Marriage Atlanta. And then maybe you could do, um... Love and Marriage, uh, Nigeria for Portia and Simon. Maybe we could do that. Speaking of Nene, though, and her new boo, Nene, of course, you know, Greg Leakes died, I believe, earlier this year or last year, if I'm not mistaken, um, at the end of last year or earlier this year. I don't know. Sometime Greg just died. And um, Nene moved on pretty fast. Of course, we know that the boy was in her bed, took a picture of Nene, sleep in the bed with Nene. And then uh, in the midst of that whole situation happening, she was already being seen out and about with another guy. Uh, I guess, I don't know, he's a fashion stylist or fashion guru or something like that. And older guy, gray beard, bald head, Peter-esque. You know, you know, we know she got a question on Peter. We know she loved Peter. She's, he's Peter-esque, okay? Why do you act like, oh my Nene gosh, it was so flirting with Peter. Nene, Girl, I have flirt never with flirted photo. with Peter. Now, don't he go there. Like <laughs> mm, I love Peter. Well, I don't give a damn what, what they accuse me of. I have never Girl, flirted with Peter. With I don't Peter. give don't a damn what fun. everybody said. Dark of the beer and sweet of the juice, honey. That's just how we like it. <laughs> and Peter is dark. <laughs> I when never I flirted with Peter. Let's be TV very clear. Me, Peter, Cynthia, and Greg were friends. Oh, I happen to like men who have a lot of personality, and I like men who are very real. Greg is not like that. And uh, that's her new boo. He ain't nothing like Greg. Don't remind me of Greg at all. He might be a Leo, though. He might be a Leo like Greg. So that might be the similarity or the thing that is connecting her to this man. I really don't know what it is. She hopped on this ASAP with this man, and now she's being sued. Uh, she's been dealing with this man for a good six months or more, publicly at least from, from what I can remember uh, based off the blogs. 
but she's now being sued by this man. I can't even. I'm not. I'm not about to attempt to pronounce this man name, first and last name. I don't. I'm not even about not nice something. I don't even know. How the fuck do you say this man name? But um, his wife is suing Nene. Allegedly, he was still married. Allegedly, his wife. Um, allegedly, they're working on a divorce. From what this man is saying, and his people is saying that he separated from this woman. The divorce is not final, and he's seeing somebody else. Nini got jokes, okay? Nini all on the internet with jokes, all right? Uh, and Nini uh, all on the shade room with jokes. Okay, she really don't give a fuck. I don't know how this gonna play out. I don't know if the case is gonna get this. It sounds to me like this is gonna be a dismissal. Um, but it's funny. Because social media is a motherfucker. They gonna always pull up some receipts on your ass. And this bitch did say to Kim, close your legs to married men. Well, let it out. Close your legs to married men. Close, clo close your legs to married men. Excuse you heard me? It? Close your legs to married men. Wow, Nene. Is he you legally heard married? It. You are you absolutely heard it. You right. You heard it. You're the one that's... And I guess it's up to Nene to know whether the man she laying down with every night, allegedly laying down with every night whether he is married or not, whether he's in a relationship on the side or not. You better find out some way, somehow, because if this woman got pictures of you kissing him, sleeping with him, anything like that, then she might got, she might, she might got a case here. The crazy part is these men are so full of shit because he probably never told Nene that he had a wife, so she probably never even really knew this shit until now. Or maybe she did. Maybe he's honest and he already expressed, you know, what's going on. But um, I feel bad for Nene because while she's in a lawsuit suing somebody, she's now been sued. And we just want the old Nene back, okay? We just want the fun, outgoing, uh, funny as hell Nene back. Not this damn um, moping Monique Nene, honey. Y'all, Monique and Nene both going through the same thing. And y'all both got the same spirit on y'all. And I don't know what that spirit of, of moping and um i don't like the life i have right now is but y'all need to get over that shit because there's people with worse life lives than y'all it's people with worse lives than y'all and y'all stood up here moping and upset daily about what i don't get it so uh anyway yeah nini sued uh hopefully uh nini this case is dismissed and this does not follow through because this is not a good look for nini i'm just not ready for all of this it's just <laughs> <sighs> um, and I will be watching Carlos King new show. Unfortunately, like I said, Nene won't be there. That's so sad. I wish Nene was going to be there. The ratings will be out the roof, but I think the ratings are still going to be out the roof because it's all of these ladies coming back. Deshaun Snow, Lisa Wu, uh, Sheree Whitfield, and Kim Wh Wh uh, no, Kim Zosiak. I couldn't even think of who name I wanted to say first. Is Sheree more popular than Kim or is Kim more popular than Sheree? I think... Kim is more popular than Sheree, right? Carry on Franklin. Carry on Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin. Kirk Carry on Franklin Jr. If the boy name has been released from jail. Y'all favorite boy. Um, he's been released from jail. Uh, and he actually posted it on his Instagram uh, stating that his father thinks his father. Uh, so I'm assuming that his father helped him. Uh, get out of jail, which is uh, a bit, a tad bit shocking because as bad as he was to his father, he still helped him out. And I think if anybody remember, or if anybody's a fan and they continue watching us and they always watch us, then you know that I've interviewed Carry On several times. When it comes to the beat, oh, I'll be the devil. God still gonna love me. Ain't nobody coming for me. Most of that conversation, I was having an argument. He's being manipulative, recording a conversation, getting in my face, six feet from me. You stupid. You were so fucking disrespectful and not focused. Y'all trying to fuck me. And you trying to fuck me? That's not the pun that I want to be talking about. He invited me to the recording. Come on, y'all been wanting this month old ass tea. Come get it. But I want to know what I said so bad about. And I listened to the whole recording. You was giving him a lot of bullshit, like he was giving you a lot of bullshit. You can't afford me. So I'm not going to pay for no dick, but if you want to bring it, come to New York City. I did not expect for it to go the way that it did. You turn it all down. I'm about you to bring it all down. When it comes to the beat, ain't nobody coming for me. Ain't nobody coming for me. Ain't nobody coming for me. 
When it comes to the beat, ain't nobody coming for me. Ain't nobody fucking with Jago. Ask around, we bang a row taco. I'm about to put Jago back on the map. Six one nine, six one nine, motherfucker. What? Y'all think I'm on that time? I'm about to put Jago. Franklin, please help your son. He don't give a fuck about me just like you. You ain't him pussy, nigga. Hell yeah, I like it natural. Extra. Niggas, like, if niggas think I'm the devil, like, like she kind of sexy to me, so I'm not offended Stand by that. None of y'all no. I'm about a bag of cocaine. Nigga, I stay on it, nigga. When it comes to the beat, ain't nobody coming for me. So I'm gonna get up. If you trying to become famous, we, you know how to work. I'm not trying to become famous. I'm famous. No, it's a parking lot. You lying? That, that's that's what I was born into. I, I don't feel that famous yet. Where I got I got I got hardcore fans like that. And so now I'm working on getting it out of my head. Y'all think I suck dick. Y'all think I'm gay. Everybody that's gay don't fuck dick. And that don't make no sense to me. Like, I don't understand that shit. Like, if you ain't mouth dicking, like, what the, what's the fuck? Oh, if you, if I'm gay, I'm supposed to be somewhere on my knees somewhere right now. I'm getting on my knees. If this is what none of your man feel like, you get on my fucking nerves. You get on my fucking nerves. You get on my fucking nerves. Nerve. Nerve. Because I love you. He's very mentally challenging. Let me say that. Wet. This is my last video about Carry On Franklin. I'm not doing no more videos about Carry On. When it comes to the beat, his mom shows up in this video. So Carry On ends up hitting me up some way or somehow. My mama just messaged me. She must be spying on me. It seems like she kind of condone it and it's entertainment. Mama, if you call me right now, I'll pay for somebody to do your hair. You Ooh, don't know. Hey, don't laugh. Don't make jokes. Can I just pay to get your hair done, mama, please? The look a mess. I first you. Uh, shout out to you for that last push. You're so disrespectful. Hey, don't disrespect me. Oh my goodness, son. Stop acting a fool. You know how to respect people. Oh. Don't hang up on me, but this is what I want to say. What do you did, did you just interrupt me? Okay, you you just interrupted me. Go ahead and speak, Kerry. Why? His bipolar behavior. I'm not going to no mental hospital today. Not today. Cough, cough. I'll get you some of that. He got into a physical altercation with his mom, as you guys know. I'm being abused right now. I've been assaulted by my own mother. I know what I'm doing. Uh, but not only that, I recently just said that, um, first of all, I don't think Carrion is capable of killing anyone. Uh, anyone. I don't think Carrion is capable because I just don't think so. I just think that he is. He, people say he's crazy, but he ain't that kind of crazy. <laughs> If you wanted to call Carrie on crazy, he ain't that kind of crazy. So you can call him crazy, but he ain't that kind of crazy. And so um, it was kind of, it is crazy that, you know, the same people who you'll go in on is there to help you out. He went in on his mother and father, um, yeah, his mother and father, and uh, said a lot of things, antagonized them, taunted them, pushed their buttons big time. And they are supposedly the ones that have um, released him uh, or helped him be released from jail. Um, but uh, I, I have like this love or hate relationship with Kerry Young uh, where he really, really likes me, but then he likes, he hates my opinions about him uh, because they don't always align with his opinion about himself or how he think I should speak about him. But I don't hate Kerry Young. Um, I love Kerry Young. I love his personality and um, the, the, the small little tiffs and conversations that we've had. We've had some great conversations. And he knows that. He knows that we've had some great conversations. Uh, but this is not to kiss his ass, because Larry Reed is somebody that kisses his ass big time. Uh, Larry Reed kissed Carry On ass big time. I feel like Larry Reed kisses Carry On ass without even knowing all the real facts, you know. But for me, I want to keep it 100 with Carry On. You know, I'm an Aquarius just like his father. And he always tell me that's why he can't stand me, because I remind him of his father. And I don't understand um, what's his whole personal problem with Aquarius. But it's probably, like he said, his father. Uh, but he probably don't feel that way now. Uh, like I said, he's been released. He posted James chapter 1, 2 through 4, um, verse 2 through 4, that states, Dear brothers and sisters, 
when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it all great joy. Um, for you know that when your faith is tested, when your endurance is fully uh, developed, you will, perf you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Okay. He added to uh, this P.S. Losers, ha P.S. Hashtag losers love rumors. Okay. Fingers crossed. Shout hashtag shout out two 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 the real team carry on. Um, shout out to my mother and my father and my lighthouse key tweet, which is John P. Key. Um, thank you for the prayers and the wind and the most high is moving in. That the Mohawk is that the most high is moving in. The journey is not over yet. One more case left to handle though. Freely here, I am out of jail. A lot of talk, but today the king walks. Chess, hashtag chess lord, hashtag wait for the back verdict. Uh, so yeah, Kirk Franklin's son, who was arrested in Beverly Hills, um, he was held without bond, has finally been released. So him saying thanks to my father, thanks to my mother, is giving me that um, maybe they helped him out. They helped him. Um, they helped him be released. Uh, helped him get released out of jail. Him saying, you know, thanks to my mother, thanks to my father, and John P. Key. What was kind of a shocker though is that he did not thank Larry Reed. I know Larry Reed was probably like, damn, I got snubbed by Carry On, and that's just because Carry On been wanting his daddy. So anytime, if his dad jumped back in his life, then it's like fuck everybody. You know, fuck everybody around, fuck everybody who tried to, uh, who I felt tried to fill that daddy void. You know, fuck them. You know. Uh, not John P. Key, of course, because his father uh, is a big fan of John P. Key. That's why uh, Kurt came out the way he did. He was a huge fan of John P. Key. Uh, and so, of course, he wouldn't do that to John P. Key. That's like a grandfather to carry on. Um, but but to me, it's like he had this epiphany. Uh, maybe Larry Reed or um, maybe uh, Sean Ewing, his mom. Maybe one of them made him feel like, Larry ain't here for you. He ain't your friend, honey. He ain't doing nothing but showering you with things talking about he gonna help you with this song and stuff and in actuality he just want to get in your business you know what i'm saying so it's really no telling uh why he did not thank uh larry reed i'm assuming it's one of those i'm a shine you now moment because i've gotten this epiphany that wow you are a blogger who i was instilling my trust into and i shouldn't have been my father came through for me forget y'all that type of thing i don't know but um, Carry On uh, is out of jail. He did not think Larry Reed, although Larry Reed was big on helping Carry On on top of his story, putting his story out there, not believing that, uh, you know, he should be in jail. So I don't know what this issue that he's having all of a sudden with um, Larry Reed, the reason why he posted, or he could be soon going to go live on Larry Reed's platform. <clears throat> we don't know. Uh, sooner or later, he might go live on Larry's platform and do this great interview with Larry Reed that we are, you know, that we don't know nothing about. That's probably coming up really soon. We don't know. But uh, he is out of jail. Larry Reed was saying a couple things like uh, he's another black man in jail. Another black man in jail who don't need to be in jail. If a black man does something wrong, a black man goes to jail. If a white man does something wrong, a white man goes to jail. Uh, don't get so caught up in this black white thing that now when a black man really do do something, we trying to save him from going to jail. If a black man does something wrong, a black man goes to jail. If he did not do anything wrong and he is not guilty, he should be presumed innocent until found guilty and should be released into the public, uh, especially if it's not nothing like murder or nothing like that. I, again, I don't think, and I'm not the one to kiss Carry On's ass. I'll tell Carry On the truth in his face or out of his face. I don't think that Carry On is capable of killing anyone. I think he's the type, like I have said before, who if somebody told him to go kill somebody, you better believe Carry On is going to take the blood, wipe it on the weapon, tell the person to go, or take some fake blood, tell the person to go, and go back to the master and say, I killed him, I did it. And really, you let that motherfucker go. That's what Carry On gives me. Like, he play a hard role, but not really hard. Um, he really soft and really want a hug and some love. So yeah, his, with his dad being back in his life, I'm not surprised that he'll shine uh, Larry Reed. He probably feel like Larry Reed was trying to take the place of his father. My father's back in my life. I don't need you anymore, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because Larry Reed was really here for him big time, really taking up for him in times that uh, a lot of people felt like Carrie Young sh shouldn't be getting no support and shouldn't be being taken up for. Larry Reed was still taking up for him and, and showing him a lot of love. Uh, and I have two, but Carrie Young don't like to believe that because he just don't like my opinions. He don't like my opinions. 
he don't like what I have to say about him. And I just don't know why he gets so upset with me. He just gets super upset with me and just, uh, I hate you. I don't know why. Anyway, moving on. Speaking of Carry On Franklin, uh, you know, he's on Zeus Network. It's kind of weird that Zeus Network uh, show is coming to an end uh, or has come to an end, um, the Bad Boys Club LA, and um, Carry On has been released, or his father them helped him get released after the show is over or coming to an end. It's kind of weird. But the next show that's coming out is um, Bad Boys Houston. So they're going to find them a Airbnb or mansion in Houston, and they're, they are going to find them a bunch of boys to move into one single home in Houston, Texas. So I can imagine Carry On probably uh, jumping in that uh, jumping on that bandwagon because uh, he is in Texas and he probably is going to have to stay in Texas being that he has this uh, case in Texas allegedly so he's probably going to have to stay in Texas he's also been released out of jail and is probably released on bond it, it, probably he's probably been released on bond uh, ain't no telling uh, but with him being released he probably has some stipulations where he has to uh, stay in the state of Texas and um, he needs to be thanking his father he needs to go have a conversation with his father uh, about what 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 what's going on with both of them but they're doing a bad boys club Houston and I wouldn't be surprised if carry on is about to become the top dog there and um, you know be the opening act for bad boys Houston that would be great a great spinoff uh, and to have carry on there since uh, he didn't get to live tweet and let everybody know what was going on. Now, to be honest, I have not watched Bad Boys LA. I've not watched it. I've not watched one single episode of Bad Boys LA. I've only seen the viral clips, the trailers and things like that that they post and all the drama on Instagram with Milan and everybody else. I've seen that, but I've not watched one episode. So I hear that it's good and I believe that it's good. And I think that they should continue going, especially if they're going to put, put gay boys on there and get gay boys a platform to um, be who they truly are, fighters, and a lot of drama. It's just natural for them. Not for all of us, but for them, for a lot of us. Um, anyway, I guess me too, because I'm on here gossiping about these celebrities, and I don't have to, but it's what I love to do. Hmm. So I guess I'm in that boat too. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, okay? Um, make sure you follow us at The Urban Binge on all social media platforms. On Facebook, it's at the, T-H-E-E, -E, at The Urban Binge. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right there. Hit that red button. Hit that bell and hit that thumbs up. When you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time we go live, every time we post a video. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. I can't stress it enough. Okay, that's how young thug them talk. Screw me. I'll go to the bathroom, please. In the front room for just a second. You want to take care of Mr. Sharp and I can, at this point in time. Whatever you want to do. Okay, all right. Mr. Sharp, you want to go ahead and... Excuse me, Your Honor. May I use the restroom or I, gotta, I need to be here? I, I've been holding it for a long time. <laughs> it's not funny. Y'all be, yeah, be at ease. Uh, yes, sir. I'll, in fact, I'll just take five minutes and you can go ahead. Everybody can. You can come back. Everything is like a messy, screwy mess. 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 I can't screech, screech. I can't stress it enough, y'all. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Urban Binge Boutique Shop. UrbanBinge.MyShopify.com. UrbanBinge.MyShopify.com. Uh, ladies, 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 we have the wardrobe that you want, that you love. I know you're going to love it. Come on over there and shop. Uh, follow us at Urban Binge Boutique. If you follow us, if you like all our posts and DM us, Maybe we can send you a discount and hit us up. Let us know what outfit you like. We'll send it right over to you. I promise we will. Just hit us up. Let us know. You know, I want a discount on this outfit right here. How much is this? And we'll hook you up uh, for the people that is watching this video right now. Because so many people don't watch till the end. You never know what you're missing. Just like you leave church too soon, trying to hurry up and get up out that door. You don't know what the preacher going to say at the end. You be done miss your covering. You done went out the door, got into an accident on the expressway because you did not get covered before you walked out the door trying to beat the traffic. And traffic got you caught up in a jam. Now you dead. Don't know if he's going to see it. What, what the boy said? What did he say? Don't know if he's going to have his life still. What did he say? <laughs> Don't know if he's going to be dead or alive. Or whatever he said. That somebody was experiencing this difficulty moment that was just not. <sighs> Ma'am, I just cannot bear to continue to talk because it's just Tell so. Tell me what you saw. Did the police? Well, work. what I seen was that the uh, police officer, the police officer was merging towards the front, and the car gunned a little right, 
and then the police officer kind of submerged and both of them interacted and it was a full twist about and the police car just twist around like a tornado girl and the Lord just shook it up and the man just got injured and now the result is this police officer don't know if his life is going to continue to make it or he going to just tap out uh, but anyway thank you guys for tuning in again I'm Rico Bellucci and I hate to say goodbye I got to go. It's hot as fuck in this goddamn studio. Yeah. Oh wow, you stayed to the very end, I see. Well, since you're here, um, do me a favor. Hit those big words down there, subscribe. You see that? Yeah, and if you liked the video or if you didn't like the video, hit that thumbs up. Also, hit that bell so you can be notified every time we go live or post a video. You don't wanna miss our content, I'm telling you. You can also follow us on all social media platforms. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a new one, Big O, at The Urban Binge, okay? You can also Google search our podcast. If you can't get enough of us, we're always posting on our podcast talking about interesting topics. So just search The Urban Binge Radio Podcast, and you can find us on several podcast platforms, i.e. iHeart, Spotify, and any podcast platform that you prefer. And after you're done with all of that, scroll down our channel, and I'm sure you'll find a lot more interesting content like this video. See you guys later. Let me finish getting dressed.